everybody, welcome to the show. Hello everyone, welcome back to Raising A to Z, this YouTube channel all about homeschooling. My name is Amanda, I am a teacher turned homeschooler. And today I'm gonna to share how to spiral a mastery based curriculum. Before we jump into that and explain what all of that is, why don't you take a second and subscribe and click the bell to get notifications so that you can be notified when we put out more amazing videos just like this one. So let's get started. First off, what is a mastery based program? What is a spiral program? And why would you even want to do that? There are basically two main approaches to how a curriculum is laid out. The first approach is a mastery based program, which basically means that a child must master a set of skills before they can move on to the next set of skills or before they can even add on to the skills that they have. So a great example of that would be, for example, a math program where a child really has to understand one concept before they can add on or move on to another one. So they have to really, 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 really understand how to add vertically down the columns before they can do adding vertically down the columns with carrying. And so that means that program is going to have lots and lots of practice of each specific skill that they are working on. One of the benefits of a mastery based program is that kids get a lot of time to practice. There's a lot of practice questions. There's a lot of different questions and types, but it's all practicing the same skill and they get very good at those skills. The downside to a mastery program is it's very repetitive because kids have to become so strong and there's so much focus on them getting the skill perfect that sometimes it gets to be a bit boring. Another thing about a mastery program that can be kind of a con is that because they are so focused on you know, mastering one skill and then moving on, mastering that skill and moving on, they tend to lump skills together um, kind of one after the other. So you might have something like a program where you have you know, adding two digit numbers then you'll have adding two digit numbers with carrying. Then you'll have subtraction, subtraction with remainders. So then once you get into like that kind of thing, it's very, it gets a little boring because you're doing kind of the same type of question again and again and again and again. So while it's great to practice, sometimes some kids find that it gets a little bit dull, especially if your program is very long. So if you're doing like adding and subtracting for two, three, four months, that can be a little bit draining for a child. So a spiral based program is essentially that you cover the same things as a mastery program, but you cover them basically in a different order. So instead of having to do, for example, the four chapters we talked about earlier, instead of doing those four chapters back to back throughout, you know, the span of, you know, two to four months, you're actually going to spread those out over the year. So you do like one chapter that would be like the adding, and then you move on to a different topic for a little while and you cover maybe two or three topics and then you'd come back and you'd kind of level up that topic, move on to the topics, level up and keep going around. So you're always doing this like spiral going around in a circle and then leveling up, going around in a circle and leveling up. The benefits of a spiraled curriculum are that it's constantly changing, so they're not stuck on one topic that they find dull um, or that they find difficult for too long. So you're kind of always changing things. For example, a lot of kids really love data management or they really love geometry. Um, they might not be so fond of algebra type math. Well, they're not stuck doing it for three, four, five months before they have to, they get to move on to something fun. Um, it's kind of always coming around that they're always doing different, different topics. And so the great thing about that is that they're, they're never bored and that you're not trying to, you know, keep them engaged in something that they just, they have no real interest in for a super long amount of time. Another great thing about spiral based programs is that the kids don't get to forget. So in a mastery based program, you will sometimes see some learning loss. Learning loss is when kids forget things they've already learned. And so because for example, if children have learned, I don't know how to do addition, at, in September and they've mastered it and they got really, really good and then they did it for, you know, September, October, November, December, well, they might not see that again until the next September, depending on your curriculum if in, in a mastery based program. And so then you kind of have to like do the review and like refresh of how to, how to do it. With spiraling, because they're always kind of coming back to the same concepts, they're never really forgetting them because it's kind of always fresh in their mind what they're learning. Um, this has actually become so popular that a lot of public schools are now implementing spiral curriculum because they're seeing their test scores go up because spiraling really helps especially their lower students um, keep it all fresh in their minds for the whole 
course that they're teaching. So this whole mastery versus survival program, it's totally up to you. Um, mastery programs, you can find one at any price point, but I do find the mastery programs tend to be a little bit less expensive sometimes. Um, for example, a really popular one that's here in Canada is Jump Math. It is a mastery based program. It can be a little bit dull because you do the same thing for so long, but it's really inexpensive running about $25 a kid. Why would you want to spiral a mastery based curriculum? So this question came up. Um, we did a whole video last week on how to reinvigorate your curriculum when it's just not working for you anymore. I know a lot of families are out there that have already purchased their curriculum for the year and for some reason it's just not working. Um, and one of the things you can do if you have a mastery based curriculum is to spiral it. It can just kind of add a little element of freshness to it and then you don't need to you know, go out and buy a new one. And it's also great if you're finding your kids tend to forget or they have some issues with their memory or attention. Um, it's a great way to kind of constantly be re revisiting the concepts you've already learned. Let's jump into how to actually take a mastery based curriculum and spiral it. In the other video, I talk about kind of math because I know math is a difficult curriculum um, to replace for a lot of people. It's a very expensive curriculum for a lot of people. Um, and it's also one that you can't really find a lot of free options for. It also works really, really well for the demonstration that I'm about to do. We're gonna pretend that this is my lovely math curriculum. And so basically math um, is usually divided into various strands. Here in Ontario, we have five plus coding. Coding is new this year, but there's five strands. We have number sense, we have measurement, we have geometry, uh, data and statistics, and we have algebra. So these are kind of the over overall themes or topics that every child covers every year. I've kind of gone through a curriculum, pulled out the kind of big ideas that are covered. And if this was a mastery curriculum, this is kind of how you would see it laid out in your textbook. For example, you'd have chapters one, two, and three would be number sense, place values, fractions, decimals. Then you'd move on to like a measurement section where you're doing things like telling time, volume and temperature, money. Then you move on to geometry, where you're gonna do 2D shapes, 3D shapes, and perimeter. Then you do a data management you know, section where there's collecting data, line graphs, how to make them and read them, and then bar graphs, how to make them and read them. Finally, you'd have something like an algebra section where you have adding two digit numbers, adding two digits with carrying, and subtracting two digit numbers. Based on this, if you had a mastery program, it would basically be laid out like this. You'd have chapters that are very similar back to back before moving on to another topic entirely. If you wanted to spiral this hypothetical math program, this is how you could do it. There's basically two options that you could do. You could either write it all out, um, kind of like your page numbers or your chapter numbers of what you're going to do. Um, or you could actually take, if you're really brave, uh, you could take your book, your workbook, and actually go and have the spine cut off of it and reorganize it and then either put it in a binder or have it rebound. Um, that is another option as well. You can go have the spine cut off at a place like Staples. That's what we do for a lot of our workbooks is just cut the spine off. And then we have them rebound a spiral round. So it's a nice little tip. It makes life a little bit easier for us, but um, yeah, that's an option too. You could actually physically take your book and reorganize it to fit your needs. Or you could write it down in like a planner or a notebook and you just keep track as a parent and just tell them what pages they're doing or what section they're on. So the first thing you want to do is you're going to kind of want to figure out what strands you have and what chapters they are. Um, usually, like I said, if it's a mastery based program, you can actually see that because um, you will have chapters that follow similar topics and then they'll kind of move on to chapter another set of chapters that follow similar topics. Let's start spiraling. You're going to take your chapter one and then we're going to take the last page and we're going to kind of remove it from our what we're going to expect the kids to do. So if your chapters are 20 pages, you're going to do pages like one through 18 or one through 19. And you're going to take the last page or two and you're going to hold it back. So they're going to do the first most of the chapter, save one or two pages, kind of as like a refresher and a review for the next time. Here we are, we moved on to the next kind of strand in our math program. So now we're doing chapter four. Again, you're gonna save the last one or two pages as a review, and you're going to kind of hold those back. Then you're gonna move on to chapter seven of your next strand. And you're gonna keep going. Now you have one chapter from each strand, you've kind of done them back to back. Consider this like your first level, you ready? 
Now you're going to start your first actual spiral. So you're gonna come back. So you do chapters one, four, seven, 10, 13. Then you're gonna come back and you're gonna do chapter two. Before you do chapter two, you're gonna do the last page of the chapter before it. So you're gonna do the last page of chapter one, and then you're gonna go in and do chapter two. Again, you're gonna save the last page of chapter two, or the last practice page of chapter two, for the next time. Then you're gonna move on to chapter five, which is this chapter, the next level up from this chapter. So you're gonna bring back the last page, or last practice page from chapter four. They're gonna do it now at the beginning of chapter five, and then you're gonna move on. Again, you're gonna save a page from chapter five, and that's gonna be your review and kind of refresh before you do the next chapter, right? And you're just gonna keep going all the way through until, until you have your first spiral level. That's basically what you're doing. Then you're gonna do it again. So you're gonna go through, you're gonna do chapter three, you're gonna start with the last page of chapter two as kind of a refresher, and then you're gonna get into chapter three, and you can even you can even go and save like the last page of chapter three, and you hold that back and become kind of like a review at the end. Then you're gonna do again, chapter six, chapter nine, chapter 12, and chapter 15. So really, it's that simple. Spiraling a mastery program is as easy as that. So there are a couple options. You can just do straight chapters. It makes it really nice and easy. If you have a program where they have really long chapters, you might even want to break it up even more than that. Do half of chapter one, half of chapter four, half of chapter seven, half of chapter 10, half of chapter 13, and then go back and do half of the second half of chapter one, four, seven, 10, and 13. Depending on how long the chapters in your book are, that might be a great option. Especially if you have a child who has a, like, a really hard time with attention, that might be a really great option for you. Spiraling a master program can be a really great way, like I said, to add some excitement, to add some variety to your math program. You can do this with any curriculum, technically any subject. But I do find, especially in math, it, it really, really works with kids. It really helps them remember things. It helps them build um, strengths a lot better. It's much more variety. So they're learning different things and they, it always feels like it's something new and fun and they don't feel like they're doing something forever. So it doesn't feel as discouraging for them. Spiraling is not hard, but it really can make doing math a little bit more, more interesting really for the kids and for you as a parent. I hope that this makes sense. If you guys have any questions, please leave them below. We are happy to answer any comments that you give us. And if you like this video and you like other videos that we do, please consider subscribing and following us um, here on YouTube click the bell to get notifications like I talked about earlier. Um, but you could also follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok where we put out kind of little tips and tricks like this on a regular basis. So thank you so much for watching and enjoy your day.